Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm David John Sponheim for America's Third Party. And I'm running for president in 2016. And this is Conspiracy Monday. Welcome. Tonight we are digesting, as a nation, the results of the George Zimmerman acquittal, freed, using the stand your ground law in his defense. And I'm going to talk about that in another way. A woman, just about a year and a half ago, used a similar defense in Florida, a mom, and she gets 20 years for firing warning shots to keep her husband from beating her up. This woman right here on screen, and this is a CBS News article, this woman was essentially given 20 years for using a firearm to warn her husband. And she tried to invoke the stand your ground law in Florida. Now, why is it this woman, Marissa Alexander of Jacksonville, Florida, receives a 20 year prison sentence, yet Zimmerman walks free using the same law in his defense. Well, is it possible that somebody is trying to release George Zimmerman just to trigger animosity in the African American community? Are they trying to start a race war in America? I mean, are they trying to do anything they can to trigger uh, their agenda? And who are they? Well, that's what Conspiracy Monday is all about. Asking the big question, who are they? Well, they are the people that run the government. And they are not our congressmen. They are not even living in America. These people are sovereign individuals that live in their yachts, that have so much money that Bill Gates looks like a pauper compared to these people. They have trillions. They don't want to be in Forbes uh, 500 top billionaires. They don't want to be known. Whoever they are, they have the potential to rule our nation and turn us into their policemen around the world. Now, let me give you some background information. How about the Vietnam War, for one? A war that should never have been fought, that obviously somebody profited from who makes military ordnance and war machines. A war that killed 58,000 U.S. military personnel and 4 million Southeast Asians. A war that our nation has never apologized for. The Vietnam War. In fact, Robert McNamara, the, the Secretary of Defense at the time under LBJ, openly stated that it was all made up. The whole Gulf of Tonkin attack on our PT boats. That they used that, LBJ used that as a launching point for a war that ended up costing all these, these deaths. Then we move on to other wars, like the Iraq War. Who profited from that? Well, lots of people profited from that. Halliburton, KBR. Over a trillion and a half dollar, a billion dollars, excuse me, a trillion and a half dollars were literally wasted on the Iraq war. Okay? We left infrastructure there. Obama pulled out, and now they've got a potential civil crisis ensuing in Iraq still. Obama's plan? Simply pull out and use the military machine elsewhere in Afghanistan. He even added 68,000 troops to Afghanistan. A president we thought didn't want war, he, he upscaled the troop strength in Afghanistan. So clearly Obama, like Bush, like all the other predecessors, are working for the military industrial complex. Duh! I mean, it's simple, right? It, it seems to be, but it's not. You see, they, these people who are so rich, they control the media, they control the mainstream media that we all watch, our cable news, our network television, even our Google and our Facebook accounts are being controlled using this powerful money machine that they have. And guess what they can do? They can pull whatever they want out of the Federal Reserve. They can make loans out of thin air. They can add zeros to numbers and they can create money because they are in charge of the monetary system as well. You see how convenient this is? Well, last year I did some deep investigations of our Treasury Department. And I found out that there is an organization within the Treasury called the Exchange Stabilization Fund, a very close kernel of people that no one answers to. Basically, the president is the only person who can oversee their accounts and what they're doing. They manage all this massive amount of printed money. Not the Federal Reserve, it's the Exchange Stabilization Fund. And they have a vested interest in picking presidents that are puppets like Obama and Bush. They are exactly the organization that I will oversee and look at to find out what's really going on within our budget, within our country's finances. Because clearly it's taking our nation down a peg or two. 
you see every time they print up money every single time they add a zero to a number it's called the fractional reserve banking system that's correct US Patriot and every time they they use this fractional reserve banking system to print up money they essentially take money out of your pocket they weaken your dollar in your pocket it becomes worth less and less and less and that's how they are using this as a hidden tax on the average American people they're fleecing us and then they're taxing us with over 160 different taxes so they've got all these taxes in play and they don't even have a legitimate justification for this the 16th amendment is very clear I mean we can only tax people on profits they make from their enterprise not wages and compensations but oh no the government has essentially created other tax laws that make it so that you better call the IRS if they call you you better answer to them otherwise you'll be like Wesley Snipes and wondering why you're serving three years in jail because you avoided paying taxes the fact is they've got laws and bylaws they just don't have constitutional authority to do this well obviously they've got it all worked out so they keep printing up money and controlling everything and they can give their money to Wall Street executives who then can prime the pockets of your politicians and get whatever they want out of everything in the legislation that, that it's favorable to those moneyed interests now I don't know who exactly these people are I really don't I don't even know if they're Rockefellers or Kissingers or or Warburgs or Bergstrom's or there are countless people out there with lots and lots and lots of money and have been involved as players within the under underbelly of our political system but we do know one thing the Council on Foreign Relations the Trilateral Commission both have authority over what starts wars and what doesn't they seem to have the inside connection with our leaders that we Americans don't seem to have access to and that is called elitism that is not something the American people allow and we have a law called the Logan Act that prevents people from secretly adjusting the politics of other countries without the president's approval so if the CFR and the Trilateral Commission are making decisions that lead to the death of young men and women around the world in wars that we don't have to fight, I'm going to want to know about it. I'm going to want to make sure they go public and talk about what they're doing with the American people before we go to the next step, and that's, that's what needs to be done. Our presidents haven't even justified war properly. The ratification of the war in Iraq took some, many years, and the Democrats caved in on that. I was against the ratification of the war in Iraq. I would have rather we found better solutions to get rid of Saddam Hussein. But here we are, under Obama now, making moves in Syria, making moves supporting rebel troops, when it's been a failure of his policy, Arab Spring, from the beginning, to fund revolutions and protest rallies. Look what happened in Egypt recently, when President Morsi pretty much was deposed from power and is now being pursued on legal challenges. We see now a country wavering in the Islamist state that it is as a civil war, all because of Obama's bad policy of Arab Spring. We've seen this happen in Libya, too, where our country literally, through secret channels, and God knows where, in Benghazi or wherever, secret channels, they essentially funded operations that led to the death of Chris Stevens, our ambassador. We're sure that there's something wrong in River City that's my contention and I believe if we don't get to the bottom of this in the next administration cycle our nation will find itself in a whole lot more trouble you see what they're doing is creating a veritable police state a totalitarian takeover of our freedoms they're, they're cutting on they're starting to cut back the First Amendment attacks on anybody like Paula Dean for being a racist when she herself apologized, she also, by the way, in America, has the right to say whatever she wants. She could even be a racist, and that's legally acceptable in America, because we have the First Amendment. But now the Democrats and this, uh, the, the communists within the Democratic Party are trying to deny our First Amendment rights. This is the, a linchpin in our, in our ability to, to literally solve problems, is freedom of speech. We aren't even able to do that. The free press is dying. The free press literally is asking, uh, pleading for help. The ACLU is coming to their aid trying to sue the government saying, hey, the, the, uh, the Justice Department can't legally watch the emails of the AP. But where are those suits in court? Where are we now? Where are we, relatively speaking? We're nowhere. 
We're out there in the middle of nowhere, just mindless TV watchers, wondering if the two parties will save us. That's where we are today. Until we start inspiring a third party to challenge these two parties with our minds, with our intellects, we are nowhere. Until we start using our brain power to challenge the tougher problems in our country, the systemic flaws in our economy, we are nowhere. So, we do this show every single week, Mondays. We talk about some of the tougher questions like the World Trade Center attack. There's so many questions about that. I mean, there's, uh, there's the Flight 93 that landed in Pennsylvania and it looked like a pile of garbage. There were no bodies. There, there's the Pentagon attack by a supposed 737, which really was only a, a glimpse revealed by the FBI. They only had one camera angle from one shot, 15 frames of which, which were released. When in fact, there were 83 camera angles of the Pentagon being hit with a missile. Seriously, not a plane, a missile. And why was that particular area of the Pentagon killed or taken out? Well, the 127 people that died at the Pentagon that day we're all researching and investigating a very strange bond transfer that George H.W. Bush had made back in the 1999 era. Actually, in 1991, it came due in 2001. It was a 10-year bond issue for $240 billion. The people that were killed at the Pentagon was the Office of Naval Intelligence. And they were taken out because they were investigating the very core of this corruption. Everywhere you turn, you, you run into this. M.M. M. Hastings, the guy who was recently killed in Hollywood in a fire that burned his car up, charred body and all. He was the lead journalist in America, the guy who was the most aggressive journalist we had, investigative journalist. He's the guy that got General McChrystal to say that Barack Obama was not engaged in Afghanistan. He's the guy that won the Polk Award. Now he's dead at 33 years old, burnt body. What happened to him? And people, witnesses said the whole thing was weird. That's what we're hearing in the blogosphere. And there's also hearsay that he was investigating the CIA right before he was taken out. Do they just kill people that raise flags and, and raise the mind value and the intelligence value of the American people? Are we going to sit back and watch this rogue government within our government take control of the future of this country? Are we going to build a third party or are we going to sit around and talk and BS and make comments and jokes? This is more serious than you can even imagine. Our nation is slipping out of the control of the American people's hands. It's been that way a long, long time. But we've got one opportunity right now to make it right in 2016. We have one opportunity to get our, our nation back and get our borders under control, bring our troops home, develop intelligent technologies, ecologically sound ideas, green, clean technologies that will spark job growth in America. But you're not seeing any of that from the Democrats, Republicans. You're just seeing a lot of BS coming out of their mouth. Well, this is way more serious than I can tell you. And I haven't dedicated the past five years of my life, going on as many as it needs, to solve this problem if it wasn't serious. This is extremely serious. And I can tell you, I'm one of the smartest guys in the world. And I wouldn't be doing this at great risk of my life if I didn't see an imminent problem for the average person in this country where we live in a police state, where robots will be coming to our door, frisking us for uh, the scent of marijuana coming from our house. There's a reason why Barack Obama has not legalized marijuana. It's not because he's never smoked it. Oh, he smoked worse than that. He admitted to smoking crack in his book, Audacity of Hope. He admitted to essentially doing drugs, but he has not legalized it. And you know why? Because legalization of marijuana will help this economy. He's moving to press for a gun control, which will make us all completely without a weapon to defend ourselves against anybody that comes to our door. He's trying to become a president that will literally take the American people's powers, rights, and freedoms away. Well, I'm not going to let that happen. In 2016, I am going to work to be the president. In 2017, I will lead this nation out of the hellhole we are in. Now, if you're one of those people that really thinks this is all going to pot, well, it will when I become president because, frankly, I'm going to legalize marijuana. I'm going to repeal it from the list of controlled substances that is uh, Nick Nixon's biggest failure. He put marijuana on the list of controlled substances and it doesn't belong there. It's medicinal. 
there's legal justification to repeal it from the list. So once we do that, we're going to see a lot more job growth in America. We're going to get our country back. We're going to see the development of hempoline in every uh, city in America that will help our truckers save money on their diesel fuel. And we will no longer be at the behest of other nations when it comes to oil supplies. Well, still too lazy says something very important. How are you going to do it when many others couldn't? Well, we're doing something that many others didn't have. We're building a political the framework for a political movement on the internet. Dean did it, Howard Dean did it in the, in the early 2000, 2004 period. But he squandered $40 million on Iowa. Now every dollar that we get is, is going toward our TV commercial plan in 2015. We're even going to deploy it in Iowa sooner than that. But we're going to be running cable TV commercials across the nation to generate buzz about a third party as this next election comes. And that's why I need donations. That's why America's third party needs a contribution from all of you so that we can at least buy some low cost cable TV commercials for under $5 a spot to get the word out there. We've already tested it in 2008 and it worked. We had a spike of 15,000 hits per day on our website from running 250 ads. I mean, that's pretty good for a three or four day period. So all of these things can change the way our country is going to deliver honesty in government. I see this as a top down restoration of our nation where I'm beginning the process of finding good people within all our departments and downsizing every department so that it cuts costs. I'm a fiscal conservative and a social liberal and I want to do both. I want to solve the problem of homelessness but I also don't want to waste your tax dollars. And we put together an idea that we think could really solve America's problems, and that is hybrid capitalism. And we wrote a book about it. So if you go to our main website, you can order a book in our store and find out how we're going to trigger technological growth, production, and conservation in America at the very same time. And we're going to help our land, which is the breadbasket of the world. We're going to improve the quality of soil. We're going to end GMOs as we know them. We're going to end the power of Monsanto. We're going to put Dow in its place and get them to use organic fertilizers as opposed to inorganic fertilizers and things like Roundup will become phased out over time. We're going to have a cleaner environment and a better future for our children's children. That's the way to get this country in alignment. And the reason why I'm better than every other guy that's ever done this is I'm a genius and I can come up with ideas on the fly and solve America's problems. All right? And I don't read off a teleprompter. So you're getting the complete package with me, and I will do your bidding, the American people's bidding. If two-thirds of the country wants something, I will go in that direction. But I urge all of you to watch our show 6 to 8 p.m. Pacific every night and interact with us, and we will definitely do what, what needs to be done and get ideas to the forefront. You've got ideas. You've got solutions to problems in America. You can come into our chat room, and I will even run a chat room in the Oval Office every day. That's my promise. I've got a lot of promises. But I will deliver on all of them. And I will also make sure, and this is the most important thing, I will make sure that we do not send more ground troops into the Middle East. That's my promise to you. No more ground troops sent into the Middle East. We're going to downsize our presence, yet maintain advantage, and we'll use scientific advancements to work towards goals of peace. And we've got a lot of those ideas on our website. We've got the ocean pipeline. We've got the solar panel rooftop system that we want to put on solar panel roofs all around the country. We want to create solar panel roofs on houses around the nation and have the savings from your electric bill go into that. But all of these ideas have to be implemented through a third party. They're not going to go through a two-party system. I guarantee these other people will not have any new ideas to stimulate growth. And the best idea I think we've got is our homestead renewal plan which will solve the housing crisis and the job crisis simultaneously. People fixing up and renovating houses and, and getting houses to be affordable for people in America. That's what we're shooting for. All right, well thank you very much for listening to this Conspiracy Monday video and we hope to watch, uh, catch any of our shows during the week. Six, five, six days a week. So we're going to be running these shows even on the weekends coming up. So do get involved in America's Third Party and tweet at third party. Thank you.